Hello everyone, today I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to upload VRChat avatars and how to make them quest compatible. Um, it's been a while since I posted a video and if you can't tell, I got a new mic. But yeah, today I purchased this avatar bun from Lost Things. You can literally see the tab up here. And they have a quest performance one, but that only comes with the good performance PC package and then the quest compatible version. So I wanted to get the original performance and I'll just convert it to Quest myself. So I thought, why don't I show you guys? Okay, so I just downloaded um, the package and the first thing I'm going to do, since it's a zip file, I'm going to click extract all and I'm just going to extract it into this folder. So yeah, I'm just going to let that do it. I'm just going to get rid of this. So yeah, if I click into this package, I can just see that they gave me a VRChat SDK and a Poyo Me free. Um, and they also gave me a unity package and an avatar image. Okay, so I'm going to have a link to all of the things I'm using. And I know that VRChat Creator Companion is out, but I still just do it the normal way. So first, you want to make sure you're in the correct build of unity, which is 2019.4.31. I will leave a link to where you get that. And you just want to first import your VRChat SDK. You want to make sure it is the newest one. I will leave links to everything in my description. So it's just going to decompress and then it's going to come up over here. You're going to want to click import. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now that my SDK is imported is I am just going to throw in this Poyo Me Free 8.0 and 7.3. Not every avatar you purchase will have shaders. Um, shaders and sdks in the package so i have a folder on my desktop actually with everything i use okay now that my poyomi shader is imported you should see your sdk right here and your poyomi shader right here you'll also notice that the sdk is up here so now i'm going to import relieve dps just because this is a tutorial this is the order you would typically do it in so yeah if you wanted to have add dps you would do it after importing your shaders and it'll pop up right down here. So typically now we would import our package, but if your avatar has instructions, I do suggest reading them because sometimes they recommend importing an extra shader like Arctune or some fur shader. But for me, I don't need that. So I'm just gonna import my package. Okay, so now that I have this avatar imported, I'm going to figure out where my avatar is. So sometimes you're gonna have a package that looks like this and you wanna double click that um, and it'll bring up your avatar right in here. So for me, um, I do not have a package like this, but I have a prefab that looks like this. So I'm just gonna drag it up into my hierarchy. And as we can see, <laughs> She looks very good, but these shaders are off. And that is okay. That does happen. So I'm going to go down to materials. And as we can see, our metal shader is off. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to click Pyomi 7.3 tune. And we're going to see that our shader gets fixed. We're going to want to lock it in. This isn't a necessary step. It will automatically do it for you once you upload your avatar, but I still just like to do it now. And now I'm just going to go through and make sure that everything is good, which it is. So you can kind of play around with the shaders and make sure that everything looks good and you're happy with everything before uploading the avatar. So next you're going to want to click here, click show control panel, and it's going to bring up this. And if it doesn't, just click builder. You, you're going to have to log in. If errors pop up here, you're just going to want to auto fix. I typically just leave this one alone because I don't care about it. But yeah, typically you're going to want to go down and auto fix all these errors and then click build and publish for Windows. Okay, so sometimes this pops up and if it says this, just click OK and it will automatically lock the materials for you and that's going to upload your avatar. Okay, so now that my avatar is ready for uploading it's just going to say new avatar so where it says avatar name i'm just going to name her and i'm going to make sure she's private make sure when you're uploading paid for avatars that they're a private 
we're going to check this little box and we're going to click upload. Okay, so sometimes it'll say that your avatar is uploaded and everything as well. Other times you'll get this little message saying error saving blueprint and then it'll say, oh yeah, update launch, launch VR chat. It didn't upload. So if that happens to you, which it doesn't always, we can just go over here. So we're just going to click on this avatar up here. Go over here, click detach where it says pipeline manager and blueprint ID. And then we're just going to re-upload it and it should upload perfectly fine this time okay so yeah you're just gonna have to rename it if that happens to you make sure that this little thing's clicked make sure it's private and just click upload okay so now that it's uploaded it should have no more blueprint error and if it did if you forgot to detach it then just do it again it's okay so now we are done we can close out of this project all is well so now we're on to the quest avatar. You're going to want to open up a new project that is very important. It is not going to work if you're doing it in the same project as the PC avatar. You're going to want to click file, build settings, and it's always going to be on PC, Mac, Linux, standalone. I just clicked Android and switched it. Um, it's going to say switch platform and I just switched the platform already. Okay, so we're pretty much going to want to do the same thing. We're just going to import the SDK. Click import. Okay, so now that my SDK is imported, I'm just going to want to import BRC Quest Tools. We're just going to double click it and click import and just let that import as well. So now that that is imported, I'm just going to want to import the unity package we don't need our pyomi shaders or our rally dps because neither of those are compatible okay so now that the avatar is imported i'm just going to find the prefab and drag it up okay so of course a lot of my materials are purple because i did not import because i did not import pyomi shaders if everything imported correctly um you're gonna have vrc quest tools up at the top here you're gonna want to click this and click convert avatar for quest okay now it's gonna pull up this little panel you're gonna want to click this click on the avatar you want to convert scroll down and click convert and you're gonna see it starts generating new quest compatible textures okay so now that it has converted your materials this little message will pop up you can just click ok and click ok again it's gonna pull up a little menu with all the fizz bones I typically save this for last so yeah now you can see that our avatar is converted and you might be like, girl, what is this? Why, why does it look like this? So we're going to have a little file down here that says KRT. And if we click quest avatars, we're going to have access to our materials and textures. We're going to click on this. I'm just going to delete the bodysuit. It's personal preference. Um, the bodysuit is not going to look good regardless of what we do. I'm personally going to delete this. It's going to help reduce the size of our avatar. And it's also just going to allow our avatar to not have a really ugly looking bodysuit on. Also, another thing is the bra, these buckles. It says black latex and they are not black. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this material is go to VRChat, go to mobile, standard light, make sure this metallic and smoothness is down because I just prefer the way it looks and I'm just going to turn that to black and boom it's fixed so I'm also just going to delete DPS because um, we don't need that and it's just an extra thing um we're going to go to VRC quest tools and click remove fizz bones and then we're going to select the quest avatar okay so typically I delete all fizz bone colliders and it, you can keep the contacts if you want. Typically, I just delete them. And now onto Fizzbone components. This is actually the jiggly parts of your avatar, the parts that move and are dynamic. And if you're wondering like what is the candy, you can click on it and then click here, zoom out, and it'll show you. So that candy is down somewhere at the foot, so I don't care about it. I'm mainly worried about like the butt, the legs, the boobs, because I'm going to be possibly dancing in this avatar i'm not sure 
And also something I'm going to be careful about is if I'm, if I want the boob to move, I'm going to make sure that both boobs are selected instead of just having one because then only one will move. Okay. Um, and you can unselect what you don't want. So I typically just unselect the hair because it's way too many components, but it's totally up to you what you keep and don't, but just keep in mind that you have to only have eight. So now I have eight out of eight components. So we should be good. I can just close out of that. Another thing I'm going to do to optimize this avatar more is I'm going to go to textures. I'm going to make sure I'm in the quest avatars texture. And I'm going to click on everything. So I'm going to click and then hit shift and then click down here. Okay. And then I'm going to hit control and unclick all of these body textures and all that. And then I'm going to go over here. It'll say nine texture 2D import settings. We can leave all of this alone. We're going to want to click right here. Click 32 low quality and make sure crunch compression is on. We're going to click apply. Um, and that just lowers the quality of some of these materials. Another thing I'm going to do is shift click all these bodies and put them to 32 because i'm going to be using the lightest tone because it matches my real skin color the best okay and then for the texture i am going to use i'm going to want to turn that to 512 low quality and click apply and we're going to see there's no change but as we can see if i drag this face in it still has plenty of <laughs> detail now that i'm happy with this we can just click vr vrc sdk we can click in our content manager search up the avatar and now that the avatar has come up we're going to want to click copy id we're going to want to click in our hierarchy on our avatar we're going to detach whatever blueprint id is already on there we're going to control control v paste this and attach it okay and then we're going to want to go to Builder and click Build and Publish for Android. Okay, so sometimes you'll be able to upload your avatar right away. Other times you're going to get a message that says something like this. Um, it is too big for uh, VR chat still, which is fine. We're just going to have to delete a couple more things. So I'm probably going to delete this because um, when do I ever use a ball gag? <laughs> Because I never actually use like ball gags or anything. You can delete um, things over here that you don't want. So if I didn't want the chains, I could delete those. I already deleted the gag. I could delete um, the ears or the choker to optimize it more. Um, just honestly, things that are going to help optimize it. So I'm going to delete this tail as well. And I'm going to go to VRC Quest Tools and remove the tail fizz bone just because I deleted that. Unfortunately, Quest has many limitations. So sometimes you do have to delete a lot of things off of an avatar before you can get it to be uploaded. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to delete the ears as well. I just need to get this optimized and 10 megabytes are under for Quest. So yeah. Sometimes you just got to delete things that you don't really want to delete. We finally got it 10 megabytes. So if you copy and pasted the blueprint ID, it should automatically come up. You can just click this and click upload. And yeah, that is how you upload things for both PC and Quest. I always just hop on my Quest and make sure it's Quest compatible and that it looks good and everything is fine. You can also use um, Gesture Manager and just drag that in and test everything like that. But sometimes they look a little bit different in game, so I definitely just get into game yourself or get a friend to go in and look at the avatar for you because there are sometimes unknown bugs and whatnot that can mess with your avatars. So yeah. If you like the tutorial, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions about Unity, go ahead and comment them and I will try to answer them the best that I can. If you need help or have questions about anything else, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, beautiful.